Hello, and welcome to the first book break for 2021. Um, I'm Kirstra. I'm one of the librarians here at Greece Public Library. I moderate the Pints and Prose book discussion group, as well as the virtual science fiction and fantasy book discussion group. And I am joined, as always, by my colleague, Claire. Hello, everyone. Happy 2021. Mm. And we've got some exciting things to talk about today with our reading. And I moderate As the Page Turns and the Historical Fiction Group on Facebook. Yeah, awesome. So last week we did kind of a look back at 2020 and today we are gonna be doing a look ahead at 2021. Um, so we've got some good stuff for you today. Um, I think the first thing that we should talk about, Claire, is our reading challenge. Yes. <laughs> reading challenge. Reading challenge. Um, so do you want to give us a little overview of um, how this challenge is going to work? Yes, Kirstra and I thought that we should have something fun to do in the times of COVID mm -hmm. and of course winter in, in Rochester. Mm -hmm. So um, the Expand Your Reading Challenge is designed to kind of get you out of your comfort zone and maybe discover some new things and give you a little bit of a pathway to what you would like to read. We have 25 different challenges. Um, you only have to do five, which is one per month because the challenge goes from the beginning of January to the end of May um, and you get a prize. And then after that, anything you read will be added in for additional prizes. Um, so you can do it two ways. Do you wanna talk about, we can do it on Beanstack or we sure. have our, our wonderful paper checklist. Um, yeah, absolutely. So if you are a kind of analog person, first to keep track of things. By Sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. You can stop into the library and pick up one of these reading logs. So it's got the list of challenge prompts on one side and a spot for you to enter the book that you read on the other side. Um, and you can just bring this in anytime you want us to update your information with the books that you've read. Um, the other way that you can participate in the challenge is completely online, so contact free. Um, you can go right to our website. On our website is a tab for readers, and one of the options under that tab is expand your reading horizons, and that will take you to the page with information about the challenge and a link to sign up. Um, we're using Beanstack to keep track of our online challenge. It's the same online system we use for a thousand books before kindergarten and all of our summer reading challenges. So if you participated in any of those programs in the past, that should all be very familiar to you. But it's a very um, user-friendly interface, um, Beanstack is. So you'll just sign up, add yourself to the challenge, and then you can log into your account anytime you want to add a new title. So because this one we're doing challenges instead of just straight um, how many books did you read, you're going to um, look at the activities and each activity is going to be one of these prompts from the list. So you'll click on the activity that you completed and enter your title there. So if you want to log online, that's how you'll keep track. Um, and like Claire said, these are prompts designed to kind of just nudge you gently outside of your comfort zone. Um, I know we've talked before, like I get in reading ruts. Um, I tend to um, pick a theme or a genre and just kind of jump down a rabbit hole. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, but there is a whole wide world of books out there. Um, so some of the books here, um, one of the prompts, uh, read a book that's been translated. So not originally written in English. Um, read an award-winning book, read a middle grade or teen book. So the prompts are um, broad enough that you still have a lot of choice in there, but again, just a little gentle nudge to get you into some different things. We do have a lot of resources on our website page yes. for the challenge to give you some suggestions. And as always, Kirster and I love to give suggestions. So if you visit <laughs> us in the library mm -hmm. or want to even email uh, the library, we'll be happy to help. Um, Absolutely. 
it is easy peasy to sign up to like I mm -hmm. just put myself in the challenge and read my first one, which was a historical fiction not set <laughs> in World War Two, which just happened to correspond with my book group choice. Um, we did the engineer's wife about the the wife of Roebling who helped build okay. the Brooklyn Bridge. So yeah, pretty, pretty, you know, I think it'll be a lot of fun. I do too. I cannot believe that you're already a book ahead of me. <laughs> no pressure, Kirster. No pressure. Yeah. Um, I actually, the, the other nice thing about this is I have a personal plan to kind of look at my um, ever longer to be read list and maybe try to pick some of those books that will qualify for mm -hmm. these prompts. Like I'm already thinking um, for read a book that's been translated. I've been meaning to read the Neapolitan series by Elena Ferrante forever. So I think My Brilliant Friend, which is the first book in that series originally written in Italian, um, might be one that I actually pick up this spring. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so, and that kind of segues a little bit into, um, do you have reading goals for this year, Claire? Like a I do, I just year. set my goal. I think we've talked about that both of us keep track of what we read on Goodreads. Mm -hmm. I also journal it and try to make it look nice, but um, I set a goal for an average of one book a week. So mm -hmm. I think I did 52. Nice. I did a little more than that last year, so I'm mm -hmm. hoping. I used to set my goal at 100. I never met it. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to be a bit more reasonable. And mm -hmm. like the challenge, I'm also trying to check different boxes of things like nonfiction and trying to, you know, keep keep like a little trend going this year with trying to experiment and get some some different things read. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I have set my Goodreads challenge as well. Um, I went a little bit ambitious um, this year because so 2020, I actually had one of my most prolific reading years mm -hmm. ever. Um, and I think a lot of that was because I really embraced the audiobook last year. So I was listening to books while I was doing lots of other things. Um, multitasking helped me get through a lot of books. Um, but my big personal challenge this year is to read more nonfiction and more current nonfiction. Mm -hmm. um, I had only about, I think, seven or eight books last year that were nonfiction, and a good part of those were uh, celebrity memoirs, which are not like the most, <laughs> I don't know, highbrow nonfiction books that you could read. Um, but I would like to push myself a little bit in the nonfiction arena. So that's my goal. Um, and if y'all have reading goals, um, we would love to hear what they are. If you keep track of your reading um, in Goodreads or not in Goodreads, we'd love to hear about that too. Um, it's always nice to get new ideas about ways to kind of manage that ever increasing TBR list. <laughs> Um, and now let's talk about some books that are going to be coming out in 2021, things that people might, might be getting excited about. Um, we didn't really plot this out ahead of time, so we're just going to kind of wing it a little bit. Um, but the books that are on our radar, um, that we think are going to be, uh, noteworthy releases of 2021. Um, do you want to start Claire or do you want me to start? Sure. Do you want to alternate every other one or do you want to just? I have kind of some categories. Yeah, I do books. too. Okay. All right. So my first category, which also fits into the historical fiction that is not World War II, giving you three chances to jump in, people. <laughs> um, the first one is The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna, mm -hmm. which is set in Texas in 1934. Um, Dust Bowl, A Portrait of the American Dream, seen through the eyes of one indomitable woman whose courage and sacrifice will come to define a generation. So um, I love historical fiction, as everyone mm -hmm. knows, but this to me is exciting that um, I hope it's as good as The Nightingale or better. 
So I have high expectations. The next one I have is called The Children's Blizzard by Melanie mm. Benjamin. Mm -hmm. um, and this kind of depicts that scenario in the, the Midwest in January of 1988, where there was a very mild winter and then um, it was warm enough for the children in the Dakota Territory to go to school without their coats, leaving them unprepared when disaster struck um, and a blizzard blew in without warning. So school teachers as young as 16, 16 people, uh, we're having to face these life and death decisions. So that is coming out in January, which I think would be a great winter read. Absolutely. Um, the next one I have is called Liberty by C Caitlin Greenidge. Yes. And this one also qualifies for author of color. Mm -hmm. um, and a freeborn black girl in reconstruction um, she was trying to become a doctor. Her mother was a practicing physician um, and had a, a vision for a future for them. Um, so I, I just thought this one would be interesting on many levels. Mm -hmm. from... Yeah, and that last one was on my list too. Um, and it's actually based on um, real historical people. So the mother was the first black woman to become a doctor in New York State. Awesome. I thought it was interesting. Yeah, yeah, one of the things too that it said in like some of the reviews I read that if you like Britt Bennett, um, mm -hmm. Min Jin Lee, Yaga Yasi, this, this would be a great book choice for you. So yeah. this one is coming out March 30th. Nice. Um, so we all know how I feel about a celebrity memoir I read a lot of them. Um, and there are a bunch coming out in 2021. So I'm just going to rattle off some people. They all have memoirs releasing, um, I think all in the first half of next of this year. Um, Sharon Stone, Gabriel Byrne, Cicely Tyson, and Juliana Margulies all have memoirs that are coming out. Um, so I think a couple of those are at least are going to be pretty interesting. Awesome. Mm -hmm. The other thing I like is a good thriller. So mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to, and I ordered this as my extra book of the month this month, The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. And okay. it's kind of a Southern Gothic. And we all know I like this Southern Gothic fiction mm -hmm. too, but this is a reimagining of um, Jane Eyre set yes. in Birmingham, Alabama in a more modern setting. So mm -hmm. I can't wait to delve into this one. I thought of you for that one. Jane Eyre is one of my favorite classics. I love that book. Well, I'll have to tell you how this one measures up because I'm a little nervous about it. But on the other yeah. hand, I'm drawn to it. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't I didn't put it on my list, um, but I had a feeling it was going to show up on yours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've also got, I've got a few debuts that I'm already looking forward to. Um, First one is also a thriller. It's called Dark Horses by Susan Mihalik. Um, this one, it, so it's, uh, it takes place, um, the main character is a teen who is an equestrian training for the Olympics. Um, and I gather there is um, some kind of sort of abuse subplot that's happening, um, but that one is a psychological thriller. Um, we've got What Comes After by Joanne Tompkins, which is um, a slow burn mystery, mm -hmm. and she's being called the American Tana French. So, I mean, there you go. There I go. <laughs> How could I not? That um, one has a personal invitation to Kirster written on it. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. And uh, Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bouley. Um, so this one is interesting. Angelina Bu or Angeline Bouley is um, a Native American author. The main character is an 18-year-old Ojibwe girl um, who gets pulled into an undercover uh, murder investigation Ooh. and ends up kind of doing some of her own investigation to help, um, including uh, using some traditional medicine 
which I thought was really interesting. So that one I'm very much looking forward to. I think I already put a pre-pub hold on that one. <laughs> oh, that sounds really good. I may yeah. have to jump into that too. Yes, absolutely. I'm excited about that one. I have um, a couple more. I have um, mm -hmm. The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. This is also a debut uh, mm -hmm. coming out in March and it's a secret network of women, um, a legacy of poison and revenge hidden in the depths of 18th century London. So I just thought this one sounded oh so mm -hmm. interesting. Absolutely. Um, I have a mystery, uh, a suspense debut also in March called Saving Grace by Debbie Babbitt. And hmm. it is the first female sheriff of a small Ozark village investigating mm. a disappearance that echoes the crimes shattering her town. Um, so I thought that one sounded really good too. Absolutely. It has a, a winter's bone vibe to it. Um, I don't know what it is about the Ozarks, but mm -hmm. <laughs> that kind of draws me in as well. Yeah. I love that book and that movie, Winter's Bone. And that actually, that book yeah, sounded really good. I did too. Yeah. Um, so I've got a few um, that are not um, debuts, but a few sort of larger name authors that have new books coming out. I'm just going to run through those pretty quick. Um, Angie Thomas, who wrote The Hate You Give, has her third book coming out this year called Concrete Rose. Um, Colson Whitehead, I've talked about a couple of his books. He has a new one coming out called Harlem Shuffle. Um, he's won two Pulitzer Prizes. Let's see if he can get a third one because that man is not messing around. Um, a hat trick for Colson Whitehead. Right? I would not be surprised, yeah. honestly. Um, George Saunders, who wrote Lincoln in the Bardo, has oh. a new uh, nonfiction coming out. It's a book of essays um, called A Swim in a Pond in the Rain that's about um, writing and Russian literature. Um, and then let's see, what was the other one? Uh, James Corey um, has Leviathan Falls coming out. That's the last in the series um, that begins with Leviathan Wakes. And it's the basis for the um, Amazon Prime series, The Expanse. Okay. Um, which if you like a good space sci-fi show is really good. I haven't read any of the books yet, but now that the last one in the series is coming out, I might jump on it. I hate to start a series before all of the books have come out. Um, Game of Thrones has burned me forever on that. I will yeah. never, never be the same. Um, and then finally, um, Stacey Abrams, who is the um, was the candidate for governor in Georgia and does a lot of political organizing, apparently writes romance novels in her spare time. Who, Are you kidding me? No. How does this woman have spare time? I don't know. But she's actually got her first legal thriller coming out this year called While Justice Sleeps. So that's definitely going to be a big, buzzy book. When it oh yeah, out. I can see that. Um, I had a couple more. Mm -hmm. I have one that kind of interested me because it um, fulfills the social media category mm. it's called People Like Her by Ellery Lloyd. And um, it's about a person who, this is also a debut novel. Um, she's a very ambitious influencer, social media mom. Um, whose soaring success begins to threaten her marriage, her morals, mm. and her family's safety. So, mm. um, followed by millions, watched by one was the tagline. So, okay, that one comes out in January. And then I had um, "A Women in Salt" by Gabrielle Garcia, mm -hmm. which is kind of an intergenerational story, which I kind of have a, a thing for those. Mm -hmm. um, it's five generations of women and it's Cuba. Um, okay. So I, I think there's a lot of different levels of, of problems within the family. So it's women choosing to tell their story. Um, a story of America's most tangled, honest human roots was one of the, the comments. Hmm. Um, the other one, which I just threw on is called Outlawed by Anna North. and. Hmm. It, my daughter and I chose this for our January book of the month. 
and um, Reese Witherspoon followed our lead and made it her book of, you know, her Sunshine Club or, you know, whatever. Finger on the pulse. I, I do. I tell you, I'm just <laughs> following it. But anyway, this one is a, it sounded, it said it was a combination of True Grit, which I loved and I believe mm-hmm. you loved as well. Yes, I did. And kind of a, almost dystopian feministic society about mm-hmm. women's roles and outlaws in the Wild West. And I just thought, okay. sign me up. You know. Yeah, no kidding. So we could have a whole little book club about True Grit and that one and um, uh, Upright Women Wanted that I talked about a few a few months ago. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. I love it. So I'll have to let you know. And if it's good, I'll, I'll, I'll let you borrow it. So. Yay. <laughs> awesome. Um, I mean, I have like, so I made a crazy person list. Oh, you went, you went, no, rogue. I did. I did. I went rogue. Um, I'm not going to talk about all of them because it's ridiculous. Um, But just a couple others that I wanted to mention. Um, Jhumpa Lahiri, who wrote The Namesake, has Mm -hmm. a new book coming out called Whereabouts. Um, Imbolo Mbue, who wrote um, Behold the Dreamers, Oh, wow. Um, has a new one coming out called How Beautiful We Were, which is set in Africa um, in the 1980s um, and has to do with um, oil companies. And so it has maybe like a more contemporary things fall apart kind of mm-hmm. a feel to it. Um, and Bill Gates has a book coming out about how to avoid a climate disaster, um, which I think should be really interesting. Um, and then one more um, by Constance Sayers called The Ladies of the Secret Circus, which is like a um, two timeline book, um, one contemporary and one set in 1925 Paris um, that I think sounds really, really interesting. And with a name like that, I mean, I've I'm going to have to pick up the book. And I think we had a category of read a book set in the 1920s or 1820s. Ooh, so there, you go, okay. there I go. Another check. Absolutely. Box. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, lots that's, and lots of good stuff yes. to read. Amazing, amazing books coming out. Um, I'm super excited. So again, my TBR pile is going to get just even bigger and it should give us a lot of fuel for our stack of shame edition this year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when we do it. <laughs> and maybe I can push my future stack of shame into my to be read, you know, book group choices. Mm-hmm. There you go. Absolutely. Um, so I think that's all that I have. Yeah, me too. So. Okay. Awesome. Um, so there's a super fast snapshot at some of the books that we're looking forward to in 2021. Um, please let us know if there are any that you know of that you're anxiously waiting for. Um, if you read any of these, let us know. We always are looking for your opinions on, on some new books and we love to talk books with anyone. And again, please do sign up for our reading challenge either in person here at the library or online. Um, and we are always available to help with suggestions if you get stuck on one of the categories. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much. And we will see you all in, I think, about two weeks. And until then, happy reading. Happy reading. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs>